Hello, my name is Katie Peterson. I'm the LifeSage pastor here at Third Church. Instead of discipleship classes this summer, we are excited to try something new by hosting a summer series. Now, what is this summer series? It is a series of one-hour teachings on various discipleship topics. The presenters are leaders from Third Church that will focus on topics ranging from Christian leadership, different varieties of prayer, engaging the scriptures, and much, much more. The summer series will begin on Tuesday, June 14, and wrap up on Wednesday, August 17. The entire lineup can be found on Third's website, or printed calendars such as this one are available at the entrances of the auditorium and sanctuary. Also, each week, the presenters will have a video preview of their upcoming presentation on Third's Facebook page, so make sure to go and check that out. The summer series will be held on Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 12 to 1 in Room 101. Room 101 is located on the lower level across from the cafe. Speaking of the cafe, it will be open for lunch during the month of June. If you are going to order something from the cafe for the series, we would appreciate it if you would call in your order by 11.30 that morning so it can be ready for you when you arrive. You are also welcome to bring your own lunch. With 20 different discipleship topics and dynamic teachers, we hope to see you throughout these summer months at the series. Classes, ministries, and groups will launch again mid-September. I wonder if we could open our Bibles and continue to work through the Sermon on the Mount together and would encourage you to consider the opportunities that Katie just described to us. I'd like to have the passage ready to read. I want to tell you a story of what happened, something that happened to me this week, and then we'll go to the passage. Uh, we're going to look at chapter 7, 1 through 12. I'd like to tell you a story. I'd like to read the passage. And then I wonder if we could just check in. Could you, let, could you talk back to me and just, where, where are you now in the Sermon on the Mount? As we've been talking about it for 10 weeks, I'd like to just get some feedback. What's the Lord impressing on you? What's he teaching you? How is he changing you? How is he touching your heart? Uh, our, our son and daughter-in-law from Atlanta were here, and I was walking with our granddaughter um, uh, Thursday afternoon, and we were walking down by the Sunken Gardens Park. And as we were walking together and we were talking, uh, I noticed a car kept circling us. And so I just kept walking, and we went down to the pond, and we're looking for ducks and stuff like that, you know, and... And a, a young lady came up to see me. She, was about, she said she was 22. And she said, are, are you the person who speaks uh, on YouTube for Third Church? I said, I'm, I'm one of those persons. And she said, well, I've been watching for the last so many weeks, and I have a question for you. I had never met her before. And she said, um, can, can I come to, to Third Church? And I said, well, why would you ask that? Well, she said... I'm having a problem with meth. In order to pray for my meth, I am serving as a prostitute. And so to make enough money to buy meth, I'm sleeping with different men and women to pay for my drugs. So can I come to Third Church? And then she said to me, by the way, what are you talking about Sunday? I said, the passage says, do not judge, or you will be judged. Can we talk about judging this morning? But before I read the passage, I want to do just one little thing. I think we need to make a distinction between a critique and judgment. On the past service, an engineer from Pella Corp was here and said, in my job, I have to provide critiques for the products that go through that's different than judgment. Critique is without attitude. It is without uh, animosity. It is merely how is the product. So what I want to separate out for you right now is what we're talking about is not critique. We're talking about judging. Okay? Let's look at chapter 7, 1 through 12. And then I'm going to ask you feedback for the series so far. Please hear the word of the Lord. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. 
So why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye while all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample you under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. People of God, this is the word of God. Okay, can I have you know, four or five people? Can you tell me what is, we're going through the Sermon on the Mount series. McKenna, you're, for, you're first. What, what do you have? <laughs> Treat others the way you want to be treated. Thank you, honey. Anybody else? Matthew 5, 6 to this point. What's anything popping for people as you've been thinking, praying, listening, applying? Anything? Help me out, church. Don't leave me hanging. Extroverts, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, Henry. Henry said he's been really thinking about where his treasures are. Thank you. Somebody else? Yeah, Lynn. Lynn said he's appreciating the phrase, this is descriptive, not prescriptive. These words are to describe who we are, how we live, what is it about us. So it's not, do it, do it, do it. It's, this is, comes out of your relationship with Jesus. Very good. One, one or two more. Yes. I really appreciate the Lord's Prayer. It opened up a new way of looking at it for me. And God's just really been working in my heart when I pray that. Hmm. Mrs. Mitchell says, the praying the Lord's Prayer has been significant for her. Let me go back to my garden, uh, walking down with the, by the pond, or the sunken gardens. So at the end of talking with this young woman who I don't know, I just said to her, can I, can I, may I pray for you? And she said, yeah, you can pray for me. And so I said, I'm going to pray for you using a phrase from the Lord's Prayer. And I'm just going to pray a few words, and, and that's it. She said, okay. So I had Kyra in this hand. I held this woman's hand here. And I just prayed this for her, like like Mrs. Mitchell saying. I just prayed, Lord, may your kingdom come and may your will be done in this young woman's life like all the good stuff that's going on in heaven. Simple prayer. When I got done, there were just tears running down her eyes. And I said, so let me just segue out of here. I just said to her, honey, the church I'm a part of, I call third deformed church. And if you want to be part of a group of people who are deformed, who are being reformed, who are being changed by Jesus, you are welcome to be part of this church. Okay? Now, I want want you to see this passage. This passage just blows my mind. Just blows my mind. Jesus is the greatest teacher ever. And I'm going to take you through this. So if you read this, you might think, what in the world? This is just haphazard put together. So look at it. Verses 1 and 2, don't judge. Verses 3, 4, and 5, you got a plank. What in the world is that? Verse 6, pigs and dogs. Verse 7, 8, 9, praying. Verse 12, golden rule. What does it all mean? Let me put it together for you if I may. Let's start with do not judge, you'll be judged. Jesus is starting with idea of how we respond to people. And let me give slide three, please, Dave. I'm going to ask you about how it feels when you've been judged. So would you think of a time when someone has been in your face, this is not critique, this is judging. This is saying, boom, boom, boom. Something that's been very strong, visceral, coming back at you. How did it feel? And what did it produce? What came out of someone judging you? And then here's my secondary question. So then why do we judge other people? If, If I'm right, I don't like this. I do not like people just firing off on me. 
saying stuff. Boom, 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 boom. What's my response? Up goes the wall. Up, no. So I get a question. Why do we judge? Let me ask you a different question. What's the primary form of judging we do in Pella? Gossip. They find that slight for me. The primary form of judging is gossip. Hey, did you hear what happened to Al? Hey, did you hear about Deb? Hey, hey, hey. There's something in that that is really, really hurtful. Now, we can, all, we can act like it's not a big deal, but it really is a big deal. And why do we do this? Why do we judge people? I got a couple examples. Uh, here's two, two, eight. We want to fix them. I'm going to judge you because I want to fix you because you're all screwed up. I need to help you because obviously I know better. I understand life better. I walk with God more closely, but therefore I'm going to judge you. Why do you judge people? Is this true for you? You want to fix somebody? Or how about this one? To feel better about myself. Now, I don't know if this is true for you, but I find when I'm criticizing somebody for something, oftentimes there's something in me that the Holy Spirit's addressing. If there, is that fair? When I, when, I, when I find myself being very close-minded, not, not critiquing, I'm talking about there's an edge to this. When there's something to this that's just not very sweet, I'm often finding something. Well, I'm not that bad. I'm not that screwed up. I'm not that stupid. And underneath it all, there's an arrogance. Now, let me take you back to chapter 5. How did Jesus start with the Anavim? He says to these people, blessed are the merciful. Blessed are those who mourn, who meek. Who... He's talking about people whose hearts are good and right and rich. And then what did he say? You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. I've got to cough a minute. I don't mean to self-aggrandize myself, but I want to try to make a point here. So when this young woman, I have never met this woman at, at Sunken Gardens Park. I have never seen her before. But by watching the YouTube, somehow she felt safe enough with me to tell me in a public place that she's using meth and she's acting as a prostitute. The point I want to make is, I hope she senses I can be salt. I hope she senses I can be light. So that she feels safe enough to say to some man she's never met before, I'm struggling with drugs. Can I be a part of a community that will help me make it through a struggle with drugs? Let me turn it back to you. How many times this week, I want you to think, this is a positive comment. How many times this week have you been salt, preserving, giving flavor? How many times this past week have you been a person of light, of illumination, where people can see the way, find the way, or know the way through a difficult situation? What did Jesus say after that? He talked about a righteousness, a rightness that for surpasses the scribes and Pharisees. So he said, you have heard it said, you shall not commit murder. Jesus said, oh, but don't be angry. You've heard it said, don't commit adultery. Jesus said, don't lust. You've heard it said, and Jesus keeps going down here, deeper, because he's always going to this. Because he wants us to have a rightness that succeeds the religious people that's so rich and full. And people say, I want to be with her. I want to be with him. I want to be with him. I told you, I think this service, I can't remember which service I talked, told this. A young man, I, we, I led to Christ at, in, in Lent. After, at the Lenten series, we had five people come to Christ. This young man came to Christ and he said, I want to be in a small group. So I asked some guys who meet and I said, can this young man join you? And they said, Sure. So I'm talking about now a journey with Christ, salt and light. And so this young man, they're sharing, how your week go? And this young man shared in his group for the first time, well, I've only had sex with two girls this week. I've only gotten drunk once. I'm doing better than last week. 
Now, what would your small group say to that? This small group of guys said, good, you're better than last week. You're becoming more like Jesus. Good. But, back you up now, back to chapter 7. But if we're judging, oh, no, you did what? You did what with whom? Oh, no. Well, what is Jesus saying? Your righteousness, your rightness has to surpass the scribes and Pharisees. What is he talking about? He's talking about people who are merciful and meek and kind and forgiving. Where people who can come to a third deformed church, and it's okay, because they're not perfect. You hear what I'm saying this morning? So then you move through chapter 5 all the way to the end, and how did Jesus end up? Jesus said, be perfect. The word is complete, be whole, be mature as your Father in heaven. So all the stuff in chapter 5, if that describes us, we have a rightness like our Father in heaven. But then in chapter 6, Jesus says, but there are two things you've got to be careful for, careful of. What's the first thing? Vain glory. Vain glory is how do I look? My sense of who I am is dependent on what you think about me. So Jesus, be careful about vain glory. Don't be like the Pharisees who stand on the street corners and pray like this, who give money and make lots of noise as they give their money, who are in sackcloth and ashes and are walking so closely with Jesus. No, 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 Jesus said, don't be about vain glory. Be about humility. What's the second thing he says that could block your being salt and light? It's avarice. It's so desiring financial thing. They got to stuff. I need money. I need stuff. You can be poor and be full of avarice. You can be rich and be full of avarice. Oh, I got to have more. Jesus, oh no. So what did Jesus say then? Don't worry. Remember? Vain glory. What you think about me, driven by what? Worry and fear. Avarice, a love for money, driven by what? Worry and fear. Now in chapter 7, Jesus moves to judging. Why? Because there are. So, so just, I'll confess some sin to you. I have no problem with avarice. I don't care about stuff. You can have anything I got except my wife and my kids and my grandkids. You can have it. I don't care. I don't care about stuff. My sin, it's vainglory. Because I fear you more than I fear God. Arlen is one of our CGOs. Lyle's been on the executive board. I've confessed this sin to them, and the Lord is healing me as I'm repenting and becoming a man who is less fearful of what others think than what God thinks. So Jesus says now, in judging, okay, there are those among us in here, in this room, who are about vainglory. That's part of how we're living. Or there's others who are about avarice. So Jesus then says, now don't judge. No, let's go into judging a little bit. Jesus said, don't judge because the level that we judge, we will be judged. So you got to hear this. The level that we judge, not talking critique, I'm talking judging. The level, Jesus said, let me just real simply, let me quote Jesus. Do not judge or you will be judged. The measure with which we use to judge will be used to us. Now let me just give you a segue. This would be a little bit controversial. So I hear people saying, oh, you know, in our country things are changing, the church is being persecuted, and different things like this. There may be some truth to that. But let me tell you another part of it. If we have not been critiquing culture, if we have been judging, watch me, the measure with which you use, it will be used to you. Judge, judge, judge. You hear it, those stupid politicians, leaders, boom, boom, special interest groups. This is not critiquing. This is boom, boom, boom. Whatever happens. Listen, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. What goes around comes around. The measure with which we judge, we will be judged. Because the measure with which we use in judging will be used. Will be, will be used uh, now watch this. Then Jesus does this crazy thing. He talks about a plank. Now the people hearing the story would have just laughed their eyes out. Because the plank Jesus is talking about is something far bigger than this. So let me take the speck out of your eye. He's talking a giant piece of wood. Don't judge or you'll be judged. 
the measure that you use will be used to you. So how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye? We can't. We can't see anything because we have so much junk in our eyes. Why do we judge? We want to fix somebody. Why do we judge? We want to feel better about ourselves. Jesus says, don't do that. And then he just says something really crazy. Did you follow this pigs and dog thing? What is he talking about? Watch it. Pretend we're all farmers. There's farmers? You guys, my mom, wrong, tell me. Let's say we have a whole bunch of pigs, not a big confinement, just 30 pigs. So here, here goes Farmer Kevin, and I'm going to go feed the pigs. And I've got two buckets full of pearls. So I climb over the fence, and I go to my 30 pigs, and I dump pearls. And I go up. What do the pearls do with the pigs? Are the pigs do with the pearls? They try to eat them. They won't eat. They can't eat pearls. The next day, I go to the pigs, pour out buckets of pearls. I do that four days in a row. By the fourth day, what are the pigs going to do to me? They're going to eat me. Right? Watch it now. Jesus says, you're going to judge? How do pigs respond when you give them something they can't digest? Watch it. Non-Christian people don't hear, you idiot, pagan, stupid, sinning idiots, what do you think you're doing? You don't, don't do that. How do you like it if someone does it to you? You stupid Christians in Pella, you close-minded little people, you live in this little ghetto town, you got all this money, boom, 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 boom. How does it feel? Jesus says, don't waste your time. Because, listen, non-Christian people are not going to hear our judging. Add it to you. Other Christian people aren't going to hear our judging. Amen? And we get angry. When we get judged, we're just like those angry pigs. So what did Jesus say we should do? Okay, don't judge or you'll be judged. The measure that you use will be used to you. Be careful. you got a plank in your own eye. Okay, be careful about judging because if you're just firing at people, they're going to attack you back. So what should we do? Jesus asked, seek, and knock. In the Greek, it's called the present imperative. Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. For whom? For the people we want to judge, but we should not. We pray. We don't judge. Can I have the last one uh, slide, Dave? This No, one more. The one before that, then a golden fool. Here we go. The only original thing I've said so far. Here it is. To judge, not a critique, to judge, I am a golden fool. But when I pray, I exhibit the golden rule. What's the golden rule? Verse 12. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this is, sums up the law and the prophets. Get this. Verse 12, according to Jesus, summarizes all the teachings of the Old Testament. Now, what's really interesting about this, if you go back and do some study of ancient documents, almost every religion of that time had the golden rule in negative. Don't do stuff to others because they're going to do it to you. It's all written in negative. Jesus is the only one in, in, in antiquity who takes this and turns it positive. His positive is, do to others what you'd have them do to you. Start it off, don't judge, because you'll be judged. How should we treat people we disagree with? We pray. Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. Now, let me stop for a second, because I can just watch people going, eh, you don't know my situation, dude. All right, let me push. Jesus is asking us to be salt and light. Right? Help me out, church. 
He's asking us to be the kinds of people who make a difference in culture. To be a different person, we are connected to Jesus. In the deep connection, that abiding relationship with Jesus, what comes out of that is the character of Jesus. So the young man only had sex twice, and four weeks later in the small group, he didn't have sex with one girl in a week. That's good news. He's not musing young women for his own gratification. That's good news. He is becoming a different man. How is he becoming a different man? His community is praying for him. They're praying for him to treat women with respect and dignity and kindness and grace and treat them like a daughter of the king. And it's changing this young man's life. That's who we're supposed to be. So you say, okay, no, wait, you don't know what she did to me. No, we don't know what somebody else does to us. So I'll just get personal. So for me, with our sons playing athletics, stuff like that, I used to go to different sites and listen and watch to what people would say about our sons. I became a raving, angry, angry man. I, I mean, my poor wife. She just said to me, you got, you, something's got to change in this house, dude, because you are off. So when people call your children, well, I'll give you an example. So when you walk into an arena and the people are holding up signs that say K-C-U-F Corver, you know what that spells, right? And in warm-ups, you have hundreds of people with long, skinny balloons, very thin, putting them in their mouths and yelling very obscene things about oral sex. And you see it, and you hear it, and you read about it. You want to talk about a little bit of judging going on here? Just a little bit of judging? How about a whole lot of judging? And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm oh, boo, this is not good. This is not good. Let me ask you, someone... Someone judges you, what's your response? And when you judge someone else, what do you think their response is? See, and Jesus is saying to us, we want to be different. We want to be people of the golden rule. Do to others what you'd have them do to you. Let me just stop for a second. Worship leaders, could you come on up? How about some quick feedback? A couple people. What are you hearing? This what's the Holy? Not what are you hearing? What's the Holy Spirit prompting? Give me a couple prompts from the Spirit. Let's see where we go. Pat. Yeah. Elder Pat says the thing that comes to her is Proverbs four twenty three. Above all, above all else, guard your heart. And I had that on one of the slides. It's fantastic. Thank you. Lyle, you have something? Yep. Lyle said, make sure we keep in, in space critiquing and judging. Remember, Jesus critiqued in Matthew 6, right? Don't be like the hypocrites who pray like this in public. Don't be like the hypocrites who dump their monies in big bags so everybody gets to hear. Don't be like the hypocrites who wear sackcloth and ashes and I'm suffering for Jesus. So Jesus brings critique. Absolutely. We need critique is different than judging. There's a difference in attitude. Back to Pat. It's guard your heart. What is the condition of the heart? Remember, I think I think the primary form of, of judging that we do in our town is gossip. Real quick, um, give me that one slide, Dave, with the four, the four on it, uh, number nine. How about this? Um, you got number, you go. Pat's point. The reason judging does not work is it comes from a, flows from a hard heart. So my judging people who are putting up signs, KCUF Corver, has nothing to do from a soft heart. This is an angry heart. This is a heart that's just so mad, if I had a baseball bat, I would hit somebody. That, that, I'm not talking. See, so my heart, it gets so, that's, that's, that's why we're judging, and judging fails. It bypasses a necessary step for growth. 
How is it we grow? Often we, we hit, hit the walls, when we hit our bottom place, when we really, really suffer and are broken, that's the place that turns us to repenting and changing directions. So the young woman who stopped me at Sunken Gardens Park, I said, why in the world would you tell me this stuff? And she just said, I trust you. So I'm not, if, if, if she, I invited her to come to the 11 o'clock service. If she comes... I don't want to rescue her from this place of growth. She needs to be in this place where she says, I need to seek the Lord, and I need to help the Lord turn my life around, right? So there's a place where she has to go to the hard place to grow. At the same time, when I judge, people just get mad, fire up the wall, and attack back, and nothing happens. Back slide, Dave. Here's the third one. Often I'm wrong. How often when I, you know the story, Subway, New York City, there's a dad and three kids, kids make just big chaos on the subway, people all around are upset, when a guy gets off the, off the subway, he says to the lady who's most angry, my wife just died, we just buried her, we're taking the, su- the subway from her, her committal service back home, and the children are acting out because her mother is dead. So the guy and the, and the girl on the subway is, you're a stinking bad dad. You don't know how to raise kids. Well, yeah. I just buried my wife. Her judgment was wrong because she didn't have a clue. And here's the one I'm summarizing everything I want to say. Judging is so wrong because deconstruction is easy. Reconstruction is hard. It is easy to blow somebody up. It is easy to post something. It is easy to shoot a tweet out. It is easy to say something. It is really hard to walk for a long time to help build a person, a family, a relationship, a school, a team, or a business. So we want to move into a little bit of response right now. I ask the worship leaders to lead us in a song to kind of open our hearts just a little bit. And then I'm going to ask this specific question. Is there a place in your life this morning where you need to repent for being judgmental? Would you sing along and then let's go there.
shit comes my way And when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Cause Jesus you're my hope and stay And when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my standing or sitting, whatever you choose. Can we just spend a few moments now? Let's just, would you just go let, ask the Lord to help you? If there's some area where you've been judging, you need the Lord. Could you just confess the sin of being judgmental, angry of spirit, dishonoring Christ? Could you just confess anything you need to, to the Lord? Be as honest as you dare. need the Lord to forgive would you pray for someone who has judged you and harmed you and diminished you in some way and if you can would you pray a blessing over the person who's judged you and hurt you And if you've judged yourself, if you've condemned yourself, would you acknowledge that to the Lord? And then it sounds crazy. Would you just bless yourself? Say an eternal blessing in the name of Jesus to yourself. Now would you pray that you could leave this place with a sense of freedom? Could you pray the Holy Spirit would give you a renewed sense of joy? Would you ask the Lord to remind you that you're a child, you're a daughter of the King? now could we pray the Lord's Prayer together and if you don't know that prayer the words are on the screens our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.